Now let's graph some parabolas. We'll start with an easy one. I can tell this one's going to be quite straightforward because I can already see that I'm going to be able to factorise the right hand side. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go through those five steps that we've written down. We start with the question, which way up is it? So I can see that the number that's out the front of the x squared is a one, and that's greater than zero. It's a positive number. So that tells me that we're looking at an upright parabola. And I'm going to literally jot that down just so in my mind I can see what this thing looks like. It's not upside down. It's the right way up. All right, what about the y-intercept? Well, to find the y-intercept, we need to let x equal zero. Now, you can write this down if you like. Y equals, don't write it yet, just wait till I've written it. You can decide whether it's worth it. Let's let x equal zero and write that whole line out. What do we have? Nothing plus nothing plus six. Y equals six. Okay, now you can write that line out, but I mean, you're not, that's time you're not going to get back. Probably you can see what's going to happen if you sub zero in for the x and then just reason if x is zero, y equals six. Now, if x is zero and y equals six, then what I've done is I've found that the y-intercept is at 6. And I think that's probably a nicer thing to write down because straight away you can tell what you need to graph here. Find the 6 on your y-axis and put a dot. Your graph goes through there. So don't show any more working than you need to. This is enough work in here that I've reasoned that it's upright. I've find the, found the y-intercept of 6. And you can just read it straight off the graph and say it's going to be the c part. Now I need to find my x-intercepts, and I do that by letting y equal 0. Now, you can do two things at once here. I'm going to write a line of working. You tell me if you think you need it in your working. You could say let y equal 0, so you could jot that down if you like. Then you could say, all right, we're going to rewrite that whole thing, but don't write y. Write 0, and you can put all of that down. Then you can say, all right, I can factorise that. So draw up my brackets. I can see the first, so x and I need two numbers that multiply together to make six and add together to make five. So I'm going to need two and three. Mm -hmm. Now I can use the null factor theorem and say, if this times this is equal to zero, one of them must have been zero. So to make this part equal to zero, x would have to be negative two. And to make this part equal to zero, x would have to be negative three. So I can then write that down. I've got two solutions, x is minus two or minus three. So those are now my x-intercepts. So I can actually go ahead and graph those. But if that's 6, let's see, 2 would be about here. Negative 2, and I've got negative 3. So that's where my parabola cuts through. And I've already reasoned that it's upright. So I can now pretty well go ahead and graph it. And it's going to look something like this. Okay. Now, it's got intercepts. It's got a basic shape. It's a pretty good graph. Let's just look at my working and see if there's anything we can do to save time. Writing down that I'm letting y equal 0 is not a bad idea. I think probably this line here was a little bit unnecessary. I could perhaps leave that out. After all, I can imagine what would happen if I put a 0 in here for the y. And so I can already sort of see that line in my head. So I can save a little bit of time by doing two things at once and saying, let's let the y equal 0 and let's factorise the right-hand side and jump straight to that line. And then this line here just explains what we found. So I think that's all necessary, but I just leave this line out. All right, what can we do next? Well, there's two more things to find, the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So can you see here that if we are going to cut through negative two and negative three, if I just halve the difference between those, I can see that the axis of symmetry must be at negative two and a half. There's not quite enough room to write that in, negative 2.5. Now, how did I work it out? Well, I averaged negative two and negative three, but I could also just sort of see they're only one apart, so it must be halfway between them. A lot of the time you'll be able to just look at it and kind of read it off the graph. If you can't, remember you can always take two numbers and if you want to average them, add them together and divide by two and you will get negative two and a half. But I think you can agree with this one, it's sort of easier just to sort of look at it and, and work it out. No real working is required there. If you're asked to graph something, and as long as you've graphed it and it's in the right place, I don't think they're going to require you to write all of that down. All right, we've got our axis of symmetry, and effectively that gives us the x value of that vertex. Because that point down there, the actual turning point, is going to be negative 2.5, comma, something. And we've got to find that something. How do we do it? Well, we sub in 
negative two and a half to our original equation. So I would write here when x equals negative two and a half, y equals, now if I square negative two and a half, I get 6.25. You can do that in your calculator if you want to. Don't forget that a negative times a negative is a positive. And then if I add five negative two and a half, so that's minus 12 uh, and a half. Let's keep it all in decimals or all in fractions. Keep it straightforward. Use whichever one you like. Plus six. And of course you can do all of that in your calculator. I don't have one on me right now. So I've got, what, six and a quarter plus another six. That's 12 and a quarter minus 12 and a half. So that's minus a quarter. So this point here is minus a quarter. And again, use fractions or decimals, mixture of both, whatever you like, really. So now I've found my vertex. I've got my intercepts and I've got my basic shape. That's all my graph needs. If you want to be extra particular, put arrows on the ends of your parabola and on your y and x axis, if you like, and you're done. OK, this example is non-monic. And we can see that because we've got a 2 here in front of our x squared instead of a 1. Now, I can see that that 2 is a positive number, so it's going to be upright. And I can also see that the y-intercept is going to be negative 3. So as soon as you find something out, feel free to put it straight on your graph so you feel like you're making some progress. Now I'm looking for x-intercepts, so I want to let y equal 0. So I'm going to let y equal 0 and write it down, but at the same time I'm going to start thinking about how we're going to factorise this. Now, you might do the cross method. I'm going to show you the two pairs method because I think most people in our class use that. We look for factors of negative 6, and I got negative 6 by multiplying 2 by negative 3. And I want factors of negative 6 that add to 5. So just jotting down the factors of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, if I need negative 6, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative, and so I need to play with these numbers, adding and subtracting them to make 5. So I can see that if I have positive 6 and negative 1, that will help me out. So those are my, my numbers. Now what do I do with them? I split the 5x up into negative x and positive 6x. And it doesn't matter which way round you put them. So I've still got my 2x squared at the front. And I've still got my negative 3 at the end. But in the middle there, I need to change my 5x to minus x plus 6x. See how that is still 5x is there. And I have that. Now I can factorise this pair and this pair. So looking at the first pair, I've got x, which can come out the front. And that leaves me with 2x minus 1. And then remember, we're trying to get another set of 2x minus 1 over here. So you can always write that down first and then say, what would go here? Well, a 3 would go there, and that would give me 6x minus 3. So if I have x of these plus 3 more of them, then I have x plus 3 of them all together. And they come together like that. Now, you can solve this by just working in your head and saying, look, if x is negative 3, that will make this part be 0. And if x is, well, this is going to need to be 1 to give me 1 minus 1 equaling 0. And to make that equal 1, I need 2 lots of a half or a half of 2. So I can see that x needs to be negative 3 or half. Now, if you struggle with that step or you find that you're just frequently getting it wrong, instead of setting it out like that, actually say to yourself, either x plus 3 equals 0 or 2x minus 1 equals 0. Now you've just got two mini equations you can solve. This one's super straightforward, subtract 3 from both sides. And this one, you can do it in two steps if you need to, just to make sure you don't make a mistake. Add 1 to both sides, and then halve both sides. And the answer just drops out. So if you're making mistakes trying to do it in your head, just set it out like this. Now I've got our x-intercepts of half. Let's put that here somewhere. And minus 3, that can go out there. And I know that we are looking at an upright parabola. Now, halfway between negative 3 and positive a half, I'm going to have the point negative 1 and a quarter. And if you want to work that out quite simply, you can just average the two numbers by adding them together and divide by 2. Feel free to use your calculator if you know that that helps you out. So I've got the axis of symmetry running through that point, And I know it's an upright parabola, so it's coming down here like this somehow and then going up the other side. And I can find this exact point here. I know that it's going to be negative one and a quarter something by just plugging it straight back in here. So I can write when x equals negative one and a quarter, y is going to equal. Now, take care here and make sure that you use your negative one and a quarter and square it first before you multiply it by two. Then you'll need to add five lots of it, subtract three. 
you can do that whole thing on your calculator if you want to. And I'll get minus 6 and 1 8, which I can then put here on my graph. Now, the more of these you do, the better you'll get at them. But you'll notice there's certain little tricks that just help you out a little bit. I notice that when I'm doing one that's upside down, and I can tell straight away that this one is upside down, and that it goes through 12 on the y-axis. So I'm getting pretty good now at just doing those first two steps very quickly. What I find is that when I go to find the x-intercepts of this by letting f of x or y equal 0, effectively I've got this line. Now this is a line that we were saying we could potentially leave out to save a little bit of time and just imagine the 0 being here and jump straight to factorising. Have you noticed that it's much harder to factorise when you've got negative x squareds, whether it's monic or not? Now, you can use three different methods to make this not have a negative out the front. You can either think of adding x squared, subtracting x, and subtracting 12 from both sides to get everything on the other side with a different sign, or you could just multiply all four terms by negative 1, or for that matter divide all four terms by negative 1. But basically, all three of those strategies will give you the same thing, which is to change the sign of every single term. Now if we factorise this one, it's a lot easier to find factors of minus 12 that add to negative 1. I can see that my firsts are both x's, and so it's much easier. And if I choose, let's say, 3 and negative 4, I can see that my lasts will be right, my insides and outsides will give me this, and that was much simpler to do. So if two things are multiplied together to make 0, either this part was 0 and x was negative 3, or well, this part was 0 and x was 4. So that gives me my intercepts now, which I can place quickly and easily. I know that was an upside down parabola, so it's going up like this. It's going a little bit beyond that point and down again. And I can tell that because my axis of symmetry is going to be just to the right of that y-axis. These are 7 apart, so it's going to be here at a half. And if I want to find that point there, it's a half something. I just need to sub a half in here and out it will come. And you can set your working out like this, f of a half equals this, making sure that you're careful there to square your half before you then multiply it by the negative, because this is not negative x all squared, it's negative x squared. And plugging that into your calculator or using your head, you've got 12 and a quarter for the y value of that um, vertex.